is that your boy? <laughs> Dude, um, no, I, your boy, your boy. Boom. Dude, this is your last guy. chance. Yeah, he's the scariest guy. <laughs> he said this is your last chance. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was like, you're done after this. This is your last chance. Like, because it was the second time he was on the contender. He just pointing at me, just pointing and just swinging on Junior. You know that I love a guy that swinging. points mid-fights. Love it. I, I know, man, for your heart. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was talking. So, first of all, last week on the comments, someone goes, over under 26 and a half minutes until Brandon mentions his Brazilian girlfriend. Well, she's actually in the room, so I'm going to lead off the show with my Brazilian girlfriend. Um, no, what's funny is it's just you, me, and Gabe in here as always. <laughs> <laughs> just a I'm Brazilian girlfriend. <laughs> it's just a it, Brandon's of... imaginary girlfriend. <laughs> but she gave she gave uh, Peyton a ride home, and oh. I said like I don't know whether to be jealous and who to be jealous of. Yeah. Do I be jealous that she, you know like like you know I'm attracted to both of them equally? I think. Oh man, we forgot to turn that stupid air conditioner on in here again. I'm sweated up. Yeah, but either right. way, either way, like Simon was a bad pick. That's a child against a grown man who's like praise Dude, the Satan. It was one hundred percent a bad pick. I apologize to everyone in the universe because I, I mean, like Junior went after my logic was, and I might have said this. Junior went after Talbot, did well round one, round two did well for about ninety seconds, and then gassed. And then I thought, oh man, Simon will put the same volume out, but maybe he won't gas because he's got that. South African cardio. Yeah, that juice. Um, yeah, yeah. And that was it. And then, okay, he doesn't die. Yeah, I was 100% wrong. He just got dead. Like a, like a child. Like just, he was just throwing him yeah, around. Yeah, he was like Hasbola, just getting thrown around by grown men. Did you see what C-Rod said? No. Someone goes, uh, I think Peyton's ready for the C-Rod test. And C-Rod says, I was thinking the exact same thing. That's really? cold. That gives me chills oh. to think about. I that's the fight I wanted to see. Honestly, if there was any fight that I could put together right now in the UFC, that would be the one. Oh, that's all of us. That's all on our minds. But C Rod, he's just fat a little bit. I think he has to take one more at forty five, and then he'll go back. Down. You think they'll let him go back down afterwards? Yeah, that's what they told. He told okay. me, man, that fight. Uh, and honestly, it, it it sucks that Junior lost to those two guys because they're <laughs> the two finishing. Best guys, <laughs> they're finishing everybody else. Like, C Rod's not finishing anybody. Nah, oh yeah, I guess not. I guess he finished not, Weems, who's yeah, a bare knuckle Weems, fighter. Yeah, yeah, but he's like beating really high level guys. Yeah. I mean, he's beating high level guys. Talbot is finishing other people. I mean, this is like a really high. I mean, these guys are really good, and Junior's going to decisions with them. Um, and I mean, Junior won round one against Talbot. I Why mean, couldn't he have fought Angel Pacheco on the Contender Series? My gosh! And then you get guys like that. Casey Tanner t fought that kid Matsumoto or whatever his name is. Yeah, John Matsumoto. Yeah, it's just like. Like, what, what are these matchups? They're Come punishing on. you for continuing I, a betting show after James Krause. Got I know. I know. This is me. This is all my fault. Hey, speaking of punishment for betting shows, we always, at some point, like, hey, sign up for the Discord and do the Patreon thing. And, yeah. Right? Like, we're like, hey, do it, like, share, sign yeah. up. Don't sign up now because we don't want you. Everyone complaining about Brandon didn't post his – a hundred to twenty-two thousand dollar bet, and he didn't post it. Blah blah blah. Well, he posted one last week on the <laughs> Discord. Was a hundred to twenty-nine thousand? So it was supposed to be a hundred dollars to thirty-nine thousand, and then there was one fight in bare knuckle that ended up being ruled a draw. But we all thought we won that fight. Um, so then after that one got taken out, it was a hundred dollars for twenty-eight thousand. Okay, and you posted that, and people won that. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so. Afterwards, I like what you said. You posted, you said, all right, I hope you guys are happy. Now leave me the fuck alone and let me live my life. Because <laughs> again, here's the thing, and not to get like preachy again, but like doing what we do is very unrewarding. You could nail, you know, you could sweep and have perfect things and have the sharpest bets of all time. And you're going to get three thank yous, but you, you don't post something or you miss Oh my God. A oh. hundred people are like, man, uh, you know, fuck you. I hate you. You're the worst ever. Yeah. I'm not kidding. hundred dollars to 28,000 for me personally. And then I saw at least, you know, two, three, four, five slips that were like 50 to 10,000, 50 to 12,000. A couple people that don't even speak on the discord. I'll hit that stuff too. And you know how many thank yous I got? Two. <laughs> That's it. Two. two. Hey, good job, man. Thanks so Look, much yeah. for my $10,000. That just changed everything. Yeah. And, and, and we're getting rich over here uh, for these $25 a month. Oh, dude. Oh, my <laughs> like, God. It is definitely worth the complain. hassle. 
some dude was, you know, I don't know. He was going against every pick that I made and he apparently lost half his bankroll and then blocks me on everything, goes on Twitter talking shit about me. And then I boot him from the Discord and then post that and that shit is. Good. Yeah, Good. don't, guys, we're going to get a lot of new people because of this stuff, which by the way, you know, we've been doing the show almost what, two, three two years? years? Yeah, two and a half years, something like that. I've made a million dollars on bare knuckle, not on bare knuckle, just on, I've made a million dollars like in one day. I've made a $100,000 a couple times over. Like this is not a new thing. If you're joining now because of all the, the previous stuff, like we got one rule. Just don't be a cunt. That's it. Well, actually, there's two. Don't be a cunt and don't be weird. We've had some weirdos on it. We have to kick people off because we don't want weird people yeah. in our space. And then the other thing you guys have to understand is if you, you know, come in and not every week is a hundred thousand dollar week. Like you like our truth is most weeks are not. Yeah, most weeks aren't. And we can put out really good picks for weeks on end, but they still aren't you know, hundred thousand dollar weeks, 20,000. I mean, there's, that's just the way that gambling is. Yeah. Um, so, and you, you've got to hedge and be smart and understand stuff and take stuff into, let, let me say it like this. Cause, cause gambling is, it's not easy. Like if, uh, if somebody called me and was like, Hey, can you just tell me what to bet and build my account? It's not as easy. Like, I don't know. It's, it's not as easy to just tail a bunch of bets. Like be, active. If you're in the discord, you're going to get a lot out of it and you're going to learn a lot. And you know, live betting that whole night, I was like, all right, this fight, I got Zalal inside the distance. I got this, I got this. And almost everything hit. I was like on fire, but you have to participate. Yeah. If you just expect to set it and forget it, sometimes it's going to be a little tough and you might not find the value. So, you know, you don't have to study and research, right? That's what we're getting paid for essentially. But, um, but you do have to watch the fights, watch the you fights know, and yeah. participate. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's go. Let's right, get let's in this. Get in Let's I like it. your wardrobe today, I think. Thank you. I thought it was getting a little spring summertime. You've your your outfits have just been obnoxious since I've known you, but in yeah. very different ways. Like they're yeah, they change. My obnoxiousness will change. It was tracksuits. Yep. Like you were Sometimes very it's like tracksuits and yeah, those will come and go. And yeah. other times it's sweaters, then then it'll be like t shirts. Now it's uh I don't know what you call these, like button up. I don't. I don't know what these like are Hawaiian called, shirts, but not from Hawaiian Hawaii. Shirt, yeah, non Hawaii shirts. Like I have bowling shirts are the same, but eh. uh, let's talk some fights this week. All right, let's get into it. First fight of the night: Angel Pacheco plus two seventy five. Thank you, Brandon's Brazilian girlfriend. <laughs> and uh, Kaolin Lochran minus three forty. Oh, is that really the first fight? I guess. Fight of the night. Yeah, I guess. Oh, okay. Where are you pulling that from? I don't think so. Probably not. Yeah, well, he. UFC. All right. Well, let's uh, use topology. Yeah. UFC doesn't know what they're doing. Um, yeah, what do they know? They know nothing. Anyway, I didn't really want to talk about Colin because he spent about six weeks down here with us before this camp, and he's going to be coming back after uh, the fight. So uh, all I'll say is that he – I'm good at jujitsu, and I don't really care who – I'm rolling with or whatever people are ma not only am I good at jujitsu, I'm good at getting out of the mount. Like nobody holds me a mount. Yeah. We're doing like top bottom mount stuff. And he started on top and you know, I'm like, all right, I'm me. And so I'm like, all right, I'll just like hang out. And then I go to move him and he did not move. And I go to move the other way and then move. And all of a sudden I'm like, all right, I got to like flail right here. And it was everything I could do in my existence to get that man off of me. He is a house of a human. Just a large block head, large block body. He's like every leprechaun melted shit. together. <laughs> yes. uh, and he's one super, super con. Yeah, and he's super nice guy. It's funny because I saw some interviews and some stuff of his that he posted on his Instagram of his last fights. I guess he's a bit of a shit talker and kind of riles people oh, up. He's awesome. Flipping off the crowd. And yeah, and he is the most quiet person on the planet in real life. Uh, it's cold as shit in here now. It's freezing in here. I what? like the cold. No, what we got to set like the cold. 60 degrees? Hey, leave the cold. Leave the cold. No, come on. Oh, man. Uh, uh, five more degrees. Five more. That's, all right. that's fair. All right. So anyway, uh, that's all I have to say on Colin. He's awesome. Super nice guy. Can't wait to see him back. I just can't understand a word that he says. Not a word. <laughs> I sat there and talked to him. So I, it was unfortunate when he came in because I just tore my hamstring. So I didn't really get oh, to right. train with him a lot. But super, super nice guy. Uh, couldn't understand a word that he said. We sat and had a 20. It's like talking to someone like my pretend Brazilian girlfriend. Like we'll talk and she'll be speaking Portuguese. And I'm just like, yeah, okay, cool. And uh, I didn't understand one word. 
Uh, very nice guy, spars hard, and he's he's really solid, really technical. Uh, and then he's fighting Angel Pacheco, who's moving down to 35 randomly, um, who already doesn't have a good chin, a little pudgy. Um, I I mean, I think Callan's gonna do the do the thing. I hope so. All right. Who's up next? All right, next up we have Andre Petrovsky plus 180 versus Jacob Malkoon minus 218. Is this actually the lineup? Like, I checked Tapology and it it did have that as the second. I'm on Tapology now. Okay, and it says Kamuela Kurt is out of his mind. Um, hey, do you have thoughts on the Billy Q fight? Did you watch it? No, I yeah, see. man, he just got beat up. He got beat up and Zalal choked him domestically. That's what I heard. Yeah, I didn't I didn't catch the fight. All right, Petrosky Malkoon. What are the odds on that? Did you even say him? I will say this though, I'm bummed. I'm bummed that he lost. I always I, bet. I always root for people that I lose to because you never want to lose to a loser. You don't want to lose yeah, to somebody yeah. who loses. Um, but realistically though, it's hard to say that Billy's the same fighter now that he was, even when we fought years ago. The guy's been in so many wars at this point. He's thirty five and right. Yeah. Um okay, what, what were you asking? Odds on the Petrosky Malkoon. Uh, Petrosky plus one eighty, Malkoon minus two eighteen. Huh. Um I, I mean, I like Malkoon. I'm just surprised he's that big of a favorite okay, do going tell. into this. Um, just because the grappling is so close. I mean, Petrovsky's grappling is good. He, he's, his wrestling is great. He chain wrestles stuff well. And he attacks submissions that a lot of other people don't. And he submitted people that you just don't expect. I mean, the Nick um, As- Maximov, Maximov yeah. uh, fight, you know. And, and he, he's good, you know. So I'm surprised to see it that wide with uh, a Malkoon who doesn't have a great chin um, and Petrosky who just swings for the fences. Not that I think it's like, his little T-Rex gonna arms are going to reach. Yeah. So. I just, just I'm shocked to hear the odds that that big of a swing. Uh, I like Malkoon here. I think, I think this is actually going to be a striking battle more than anything. And I think Malkoon can beat him with a jab because um, you look at Malkoon with Brennan Allen and I mean, you know, of course he got hit with stuff. It's arguable that he, I, I don't know. I, I, I rewatched that fight and I remember thinking Malkoon should have won it. And then I rewatched and I was like, no, the nah, way that, it was close, but he didn't win. Like he definitely won a round. And then the two rounds he could have won, but then Allen would end up on the top right at the end. It kind of, it, it was enough to seal it, but it was close. But on the striking side, Malkoon wasn't getting hit, hit and tagged up with anything, landed a couple, couple of good punches, but more than anything, he looked calmer and more relaxed and even as brendan allen was throwing on him he's like moving away and just and and he's got a decent jab and petrosky everything is so big and so like telegraphed that it's just going to be overhand left overhand right overhand left overhand right and i see malkoon just like jabbing and moving and jabbing and moving and then wrestling and clinching uh the cardio side definitely on malkoon I think fight IQ side definitely on Malkoon as well. Just knows to clinch. And honestly, Malkoon's single leg is gorgeous. He single legs. Everybody gets a single, lifts it up, starts rotating, pulls his head outside, and then hits that trip, that backside trip on it. Uh, he does it to everybody. does it really well. Uh, if he does get put on his back, he does a really good job of wrestling up on the single leg, almost like deep half guard coming up to a single leg. So he kind of mixes deep half with wrestling come ups. Uh, he, he's, he's really good. Outside of like Petrosky just clipping him early, I, I don't see Petrosky winning this fight. Uh, so I like Malkoon here in a over, probably over one and a half, over two and a half, something like that. Here, here's my worry about it. So you watch uh, Malkoon. So I think obviously the price is just indicative of cardio. Yeah. Who's got the phone going? Oh, man. Beeper's Some, gonna somebody beep. turn, turn that off. We're, we're running. No, it's actually my. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I think it's just obviously indicative of cardio, right? We've seen Petrosky gas and gas, and he fights through it, and he can still shoot blast doubles. And I, I think Malkoon just kind of knows his game better. But here's what I worry about. Watching the Malkoon fight when he fought, uh, was it Cody Brundage? He got yes. taken down right mm-hmm. away. And Cody Brundage has horrible jiu-jitsu. I don't care what he thinks about his own guillotine, but his jiu-jitsu isn't good. And one difference between Petrosky and a lot of those other guys is he does wrestle, but he has very good jiu-jitsu, very good control, very good transitions, back takes. Like, he is solid. And so what I actually worry that this fight is going to end up looking like is round one, Petrosky takes him down and dominates him on the top. And then round two, 
takes him down and dominates him on the top. And then round three, okay, maybe he's a little bit more tired and finally Malkoon can, can keep him off and then he comes back. Too little, too late. But it's too little, too late. That's where I worry about. This, this card to me is, uh, I hate this card. Just from a betting perspective, I, I uh, you know, this is an Atlantic City card. It's with a crowd. And ironically, I hate all the people from that region and that area. Um, yeah, that's I, actually, sorry to interrupt that. I didn't think about that. And Malkuna is coming all the way from Australia. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Yeah. And that's, a, man, it's such a flight when people travel that much. It's really hard. Yeah, it is hard. And, it, you know, he he is good at what he does, that single leg and just kind of a, a bulldog and doesn't get off you. And so theoretically, you're like, man, he's just going to kill Petrosky, especially, you know, round two, round three. He's always going to be fresher and fights within himself. So for that reason, I, I will pick Malkoon. But this is not something that I'm like, Oh, f- f- no doubt. Put your whole house on it. Just because I could see a world in which Petrosky just dominates top game and moving and transitions. And yeah, that's what yeah. I got. That's why I was surprised to see the line so crazy because like you said, they're pricing it with cardio, but Petrosky is stylistically in the matchup. Like he has some ways to win. here. I just hate his striking. I, I hate a lot of Petrosky's game, uh, but he's done well with what he has yeah. somehow. All right. All right, cool. Next up, Melissa Gatto, minus 162 versus Victoria Dudakova, plus 136. Uh, give us your thoughts. Go. Uh, this is a really interesting one. I just hate Brazilian women, so I'm going to have to go with uh, Dudakova. <laughs> uh, I love it. Next. <laughs> no, I... This is uh this is another one that's really tough because you know Dudakova had all that fungus in her vagina last time, which made things really tough for her. Right, we saw a, kind of a bad performance. Um, it was in her vag and her butthole, and uh, you know she she couldn't perform to. <laughs> are you going to qualify this, or are we just going right? Do you over guys it? not remember no. this? No, no. She literally said because she fought Jin Frey last time. Yeah, you really don't remember this. No, and she got out to the post fight presser and was like, "Yeah, I have like staff like." Ah, ah, ah. No way. And everyone was like, what do you mean? They're like, yeah, it's like, ah, ah, ah. And they're like, yeah, we didn't check. It's called a yeast infection. <laughs> no, she had staff on her, wow. on her rim. And so that's why oh. she's like, I, I couldn't perform like how I wanted to perform. Remember, I got up here and I was like, I had a dream and a prophecy. Dude, a call oh, going to submit right. her. Yes. And she just kind of stood there and was yeah. really tepid and was like, you know, kind of do a little bit, just enough, but didn't wrestle at all. Um, I... I think I actually like Dudakova. She does have good striking when she wants to use it, kind of that zippy in and out style. She can wrestle. Uh, Gato is good, but she's like weirdly so square, and she's willing to play off her back. So if there's a wrestling game plan, fuck her jujitsu. I think I like Dudakova here, especially at Dog Money. I uh, I didn't mean to make that weird for anybody. I thought that was like no, common I knowledge. I didn't know what you're talking. I about. thought that was like really common knowledge. <laughs> No. So I like I've Gato actually had here. staff on my butthole every fight that I've ever yeah, had. Yeah, like that's, you have it right now. <laughs> I, I like Gato here. I think she, Dudakova is going up uh, a weight class. Gato is just big. She, I remember when she fought Tracy, her arms were so long. They're huge. Like she has ape arms. And she took Tracy down a couple of times, um, just grabbed her, threw her down. I just think physically, I think Gato is going to be too much. I think we're putting a lot on the Gato performance against Ariane Lipsky, and Lipsky is freaking leveled up. She's really good right now, and I think Gato is not. I like, think she's beating a bunch of mid fighters. Who Gato? Yeah, uh, Lipsky. Lipsky. I mean, she's looked really good. Who did she just beat? Um. <laughs> um. Anyways, next up, uh, Gato. Gato's beat, yeah, but I think Dudakova is mid, and I think she's going to be small, and I think Gato's going to get the takedowns and kind of dominate her. If she gets on top, that could be a real yeah. issue because it seems like Dudakova's get-up game is not the best. I like Gato by sub. I could definitely see that. All right. All right, cool. Moving on. Anton Turkal is at plus 105 versus Ibo Aslan, minus 125. Uh, this is a rematch. Hilarious rematch. I don't get like why the, the whole like yeah like I want I I was wondering the same thing. Did Ebo ask for this? Like, hey, this is I got to get it back. Yeah, but I don't know if he wants it back because like Anton is not amazing anywhere. Man, he will like fall. No, he's bad. You can just say yeah, it. He's, he's bad. bad. He'll fall over. 
he, that said, he's gotten better since he's been in the UFC slightly. So is Ebo. It's, well, he's on Epo. Yeah, Ebo's on Epo. And he kind of death gassed himself out. But you said it. This is Atlantic City with a crowd. Ebo death gassed himself out in that first uh, Anton fight. And then now it's his UFC debut with a crowd. Does he death gas again? Mm. So I, I, I don't think so. I think as long as he doesn't death gas, he wins this. But, I mean, Turkali is just wild and throws. He'll fall all over the place. He's swinging. Um, but he didn't die against Petrino. And that's the only thing here that makes me kind of question if he just doesn't die and Ebo death gases, because that's what we saw the last time. And then Ebo, like, dude, his last, oh my gosh, he is fighting like somebody's drunk uncle. Like he's like all of the guys he has fought are horrible. And he's fighting these short, stocky, fat guys. Brazilians. Like, pff, he looks bad. I wouldn't touch this, you guys. I, 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 I lean Ebo just by he's better and maybe he doesn't death gas. But okay, I have a question. So that first fight was kind of hectic. So first, watching that first fight, they were both hands at their hips, just launching, boom, 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 hands down, just launching at each other, trying to kill each other. And then after the fight, right, Anton got in his face. Uh, I, I don't know if Swedish people are allowed to cuss, but if they were, he was probably saying something not nice to Ebo. By the way, how do international fighters talk shit to each other? Like, what language do they decide upon to be like, hey, fuck you? Oh, it's um, French. It's, it's always French. French. No, come on. Yeah, They're too the, soft. The, French is no, too that's soft. International, I believe that's the language that they use at the Olympics. I think that's the language of love, right? And, uh, French? I don't know, but uh, I'm going with French. Okay. So Either way. Um, romance so, language. So he, here's yeah. my question is, do they come out in the second fight? Because that first fight was so hostile and it was just such a slugfest. Do they come out in that in the second fight and do the same thing? Like, like you know, lay our dicks on the table? Or is it going to be very, like, you know, tentative and, and tepid. How is your experience with how that goes? You never know. You never know. It's a, the rematches are always weird and they generally don't live up to the hype. So I've been on the edge of my seat for this fight for some time. Really? Oh, I could not Just wait because the, you know, they're going to, because they <laughs> hate each other. I'm joking. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I don't know. I think if it's a boring fight, I think that favors Ebo. I should have kept that going for a little bit longer. I, you've been a real life <laughs> troll since I've known you. I can never tell. Uh, I got Ebo in this one. Uh, the move to Extreme Couture, it looks like he's on some pretty good vitamins. Um, it looks like the UFC is wanting to push him just based on who they gave him yeah. on Contender Series. And then giving him Anton, Pleasure Man, who just has like zero skills and his only ability is just to kind of hang around. And typically I hate going for the guys that are, uh, you know, gas bags and, and, and wear themselves out and they look so flashy and big. But I, I think Ebo is the one that they're, they're wanting here. And, yeah. uh, that means nothing, but I think he's probably going to knock out Anton. I'm okay with that, too. All right. All right, cool. Next up, Connor Matthews, plus 105 versus Dennis Bazooka, minus 125. You go first, and I know how much you love Dennis Bazooka. No, I'm going to go the other way on this one. Um, I, they both, First of all, both East Coast guys. One's at, what, Sarah Longo, and then the other guys at New England Cartel. New England, yeah. Um, I like Connor Matthews. You know, he was kind of unknown for a while because he was fighting a bunch of uh, 0 and 5 guys and knocking them out in under a minute. And then he had to fight with Francis Marshall, which he did lose. But Francis, I think, is I like Francis. He's not you know world beater, but he's he's fine. He's decent. Um, and it was a tough fight. It was a, a lot of strikes, a lot of volume, and both guys had to dig pretty deep. And then he had that last fight against the Brazilian guy, and that dude was pretty explosive and dynamic and hits hard. And, you know, a lot of people make a big deal about, you know, how much damage he wears and, and how much he eats. And I kind of thought like, yeah, but we all bet on Peyton Talbot last week, who does the exact same thing. Now, I'm not comparing the two. Yeah, but Connor's like, gets like wobbly. Yeah, kind of. Maybe, maybe he's just. Yeah, in his, in his fight with Marshall and his last fight, he got hit and like stumbled, stumbled, like, oh, like he was drunk all of a sudden. But he forces the fight and, and Bazooka, I think is, uh. He's fun to watch. Like he is pretty technical and moves and does all this the stuff like well. But I think when forced to firefight, this is going to be very different. And I think Connor Matthews actually hits hard. From from what I've heard, the dude's got power. Like he sits on his punches and he hits very hard. I think Bazooka might come out looking great round one and picking him apart. And I think that forward pressure and just that I don't really care and I'm going to stay in your face eventually will wear Bazooka down. I kind of see a Matthews knockout here. So I like Connor Matthews. 
Okay. I look at these two as very similar to one another in the sense where they're not necessarily even style-wise or technique-wise, but just where they're at on a technical level. Like they're both decent everywhere, but none of them, the, neither of them are like world beaters anywhere, and they're very mid but tough guys. They're just kind of bros. <clears throat> yeah. And I think Bazooka's going to win up close and in the flurries and exchanges because he likes to throw uppercuts and body shots, and then he likes to do the Dutch kickboxing Ernesto Hoos drill. Cross, left hook to the body, right low kick. He likes to shoe shine in there a little bit. Whereas Matthews is just big one-twos out. He sits on those things, and he yeah. throws them long, though. I like that. I, I know. They're really good punches, really good power from outside. Other thing that Matthews has is really good top control. When he gets on top, he looks really good. The thing, though, is I don't know if it, – it's funny. I don't really – I'm not big on Bazooka's overall wrestling, but his defensive chain wrestling is good. He does yeah. the right stuff where he defends, shoves the head down, moves, does all that good stuff. Um, and I think this is a close fight. I think Connor Matthews wins it by – forward pressure and power. I think like you said, he just wears him down. He's got that stopping Um, power and he isn't afraid to get hit. And Bazooka, I don't think like his fight, I think right before he made it to the UFC was a six and four, a six and five guy that he beat in, in the later rounds. Um, And I just don't know that he has the power to really finish when like against a guy like Matthews that I think you got to put away and really beat up or else he won't fuck off. Matthews has a good jab. And, you know, we talked about this on the breakdown last week with uh, Padilla and Pajulo, right? Everyone's like, uh, you know, it was just funny. Like people were going out on their shield on Pajulo. Like, oh my God, that guy's amazing. And he just is a zombie and he walks forward, which is great. Great. If you're fighting a guy, you can break. But literally all Padilla did was flick a jab. And then now he's the guy moving forward. It changes the whole dynamic of the fight. And I think this fight could look really similar with Connor Matthews jab and his long punches. Sets the tone for everything else. And all the flash and flair and all the cool stuff, it, it's fine. We were actually doing a drill at practice today. One guy was supposed to be like Zalal, right? Like how he moves and he does all that lateral movement and comes back in and pop shots. And then there was the other guy that kind of like stalks him down and is supposed to cut angles. And I was just thinking like, man, my life would be really hard if I was like the skirting on the outside guy because I like to cut angles and fight in close and wear people. I, I was so exhausted from moving around for, for a minute at a time. Imagine 15 minutes of me just like, oh, Jesus, that's a lot. So yeah. I like Matthews here for that reason. Okay. What are the odds on that? Do we know? Probably Matthews a dog. Close. Oh, is he? Matthews is plus 105. Bazooka's minus 125. Slam it. Slam. Oh, come on. He's going to go like Carlos Hernandez. Remember when we started? <laughs> Carlos Hernandez, put your house on it. Oh, God. Hey, he won. So there was a guy good. that just did a NCAA pick, and he had to uh, apologize publicly because he said – this is uh this is about as a risk free investment as you can ever get, and it was like a points total under. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Especially at NCAA is like yeah. Man. All right, yeah. all right. Next up, we have the biggest favorite on the card, Julio Arce minus four fifty five versus Gilbert Burns' younger brother Herbert Burns at plus three fifty. Is he his younger brother or his older brother? Uh, is he slightly younger? They're both old. Yeah. Uh, am I up or are you up? Um, you are up. I mean, all the smart brain stuff says Julio Ars. He's good. Um, you got to make a case for Herbert Burns. No, but uh, a little bit. So he's good. He does all the right stuff. His footwork is really good. He doesn't gas. Uh, he will get taken down a little bit. And like, you, you don't have to overthink this one. We don't have to go much into it. But Herbert Burns round one is legitimately a force where he can grab some people and take them down and go in a Herbert Burns round one. I mean, he knocked out late Nate Landwehr with a knee and then he'll drag people down and he will submit people. If they ran that fight back a hundred times, how, how often do you think that? Oh, I, that was the only one. I, I, no, no, I'm, I'm not, but at 350 at plus 350 for Herbert Burns to get a submission in round or Herbert Burns round one is not bad. And then you hedge the second. It doesn't, isn't going to go that way. So, well, then you would just bet on Herbert Burns round one instead of his money line. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I'm just saying, which has got to be even like, I, I don't even know what the odds on that are, but I'm saying it's not a bad bet considering Herbert Burns and what he does in round one and how successful he's been in the past in round one. Again, after that, the, like the brain says, yeah, Julio Arce can win this. But just from the odds and what we know about Burns and all of that stuff, um, it's not the craziest bet the world has ever come across. 
I just, I've never seen, I've never seen a more pathetic. Okay. There's only two performances I can ever think of. That was the most pathetic things I'd ever seen. That Herbert last Burns is one that was, that was amongst the most embarrassing things yeah. I've ever seen in the UFC. Um, what's the other one? Uh, Claudio Puelas when he fought Dan Hooker. <sighs> yes. And both those two people are still in the UFC amongst the worst I've ever seen. Like, just I'm not getting up and then lays there in exhaustion and then Gilbert comes and carries him out of the cage. Oh, that was, <laughs> that was the most hilarious thing. Uh, Ugh. I I like Arce a lot. He's a he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu and he's a very good I think he's a yeah. very good black belt. His grappling is transitions. You always love Arce a lot. He's one of your guys that you he's just one of my guys. I know. I, for some I just love South Paul He's boxing. Julia Stolyarenko for you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's my <laughs> he's my Julia. I love his South Paul boxing. I think he's just got such a complete game. And he was fighting up for so long, and I think he's back at 45, right, for this fight? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's not really his weight class. Like, he's a small 45er. He should be at 35. Well, no, that's where he was going, and now he's back up at 45. For that's this. what I just said. Oh, I thought you were saying, like, okay. No, I he fought 45. The other way. Yeah. He fought 45, went to 35, and, and now, now he's, he's back. back up. Yeah. Yeah. That's my worry here is that, that Burns gets a takedown like he did on Bill Algio round one. Yeah. But just that RC is just a little bit too small with him on his back. I mean, he's fought 45 before and he's looked so good against guys that like were just way bigger and even just as good as him. Like that dude's game and he's down to fight. You know, at the money line, it's pretty hard to touch. But, you know, obviously the later round props to three KO. And I don't know. Dan Ige took him down. So took who down? RC. Numerous times. Ige is one of the best grapplers on the planet. The, he is the best wrestler in the UFC. We know that. All right. We're both going RC, but. We both can recognize there is with some an danger. asterisk. With, yeah, there's some that, danger. That there's a yeah, there's some big danger with yeah, you can't touch here. the money line unless yeah. it's live or something like that. Okay. Anyways. All right, cool. Next up, Verna Janiroba plus one seventy versus Lupi Godinez minus two oh five. You go on this one because I didn't tape this. Um again, I could never bet I, honestly I can barely even be in the room with a Brazilian woman, let alone bet on one. No, especially against a Mexican. Especially against a Mexican. Right. That's right. Viva la Mexico. Which you are apparently half. Viva all Latinos. That's the greatest C-Rod meme of all time. <laughs> um, in a vacuum, in a vacuum, I think this is such a horrible stylistic matchup for Loopy. Uh, you, you know what's funny is that we always use both of them and Angela Hill as parallels. The gauge. Like, yeah, those are the ones that you gauge everything. Yeah, on. because, you know, Angela Hill beat Loopy, right? And my whole point of that was like, yeah, Loopy wrestles, but she has zero ground control. And honestly, her jiu-jitsu mistakes are severe mistakes. And then Virna can't wrestle, but once she does get you down, like, good night, it's wraps. And so in a vacuum, I'm like, man, Virna is like not the worst striker in the world. You know, she's not picking you apart and knocking, you know, Boots Ennis, but she, she's solid. She's fine. And Loopy's kind of the same way. She's fast and has got quick hands, but she's really like wide and boxy and just like, I, I, I don't know. They both have flaws. And they both have good things that they do. Um, in a vacuum, I'm like, man. I, well, I got to interrupt before you go. And I don't okay. know a lot on this, so take this with a grain of salt, but I'm just throwing you information to help your pick. Okay. Uh, Loopy is down training with Diego Lopez in them now. Yeah. And I think that Vegas. helps jujitsu wise. And her hands have looked, I, I don't even want to say better, but more comfortable. She looks more comfortable standing. She doesn't rush her takedowns as much. And I think her defensive grappling is going to be much, or defensive wrestling is going to be much better. I'm coupled, not worried about her wrestling at all. Yeah, but I'm just saying coupled with now, I think a lot of jujitsu work with uh, Alexa Grasso and all of them. Do you think that helps her in this situation at all? A hundred, does it help? Yes, 100%. Then being at 10th Planet Toronto, Yes, it helps a lot because you watch her early fights and she even won that fight by armbar. Was that against Silvana Gomez Juarez? She won by yes, a yep. she, weird one on the cage. No, she had the back and then she went for a belly down armbar while she had the back. And, you know, most girls are not going to tap to that. They're pretty flexible. It's such a critical mistake. You're giving up the best position for a belly down armbar. Like, they're just horrible. And Verna's Jiu Jitsu is very nice. Very, very nice. So in a vacuum, I'm like, man, this seems like the worst uh, matchup for Loopy because you're going to get someone who grabs a hold of her, won't let go, gets her down, and then is going to control her and submit her, and eventually Loopy will make a mistake. There's something in the water, in that Vegas water, with all those Mexicans in the same room at the radium camp. You got, what, Diego Lopez. You got that that little jacked-up Mexican dude. You got Alexa and, and, uh, and Loopy. I, 
I think Loopy's gonna gonna win this. Pull fight. a hat trick somehow. No, not even she's going to need to pull a hat trick. I just think she's got a lot of star power, and obviously the UFC sees what they have in her. She's fighting a 35-year-old Verna John Jaroba, who I think does have skills and a lot of good stuff to offer, but it's probably going to be sprawl and brawl from from Loopy. Um, I mean, it's kind of like Peyton last week. It's like, okay, I understand how good Simon is, and uh, I understand how this could be lined very differently, but he's just got a star power about him, and same with JDM, and same with Loopy in this matchup. Like, it could be a bad matchup, but I, she's going to she's gonna look huge favorite in this, I think. What's next? All right, next up. <laughs> <laughs> Nate the Train, Landwehr, plus 170 versus Jamal Emmers at minus 205. I mean, watching tape on this, I, I just, Nate is just awesome. Nate is awesome. And for as crazy and reckless as he is. Very smart. He's smart and does a lot of stuff well. The thing with Nate is he thrives in a chaotic situation. And I, I don't think Jamal Emmers is going to He has three that. baby mamas literally for that same reason. Does he really? Just so he can thrive. Yeah, in those situations. It's, it's practice. I made so, that up yeah. completely. <laughs> I think he's got a black wife. It's awesome. Turns out he's like the most wholesome human on the planet. <laughs> uh, no, Nate is – he does such a great job. People are swinging and going, and he stays calm in, in that chaos. The thing that Emmers does so well, first of all, his footwork is really good. Emmers in his range is really good. What I think is going to help him the best in this fight is he controls where the fight goes. He does a really good job of staying long and at range and touching and uh, using his long ass arms, you know, and he's got a good jab cross, you know, good low kicks. Then the other thing is when people crash, he doesn't like uh, exchange with them and start fighting with them or even shoot, he'll just crash and clinch and hang out. Like, he just doesn't get involved in the chaos. He always fights where he wants to. We've seen him. He has good takedown defense. He has good cardio. I mean, Jamal Emmers is really good. He has a really good high fight IQ. We saw him with the Sabatini fight where it's like he dropped him, jumped on him, got heel hooked. God, that, that one kills me too. Right? It just, he, Jamal Emmers is really good. One thing he does do is he overreaches his punches quite a bit like you'll see him really kind of fall off balance toward people but he's so far away and so long that nobody really capitalizes on it and nate the train doesn't do well when people are moving when they don't engage in a firefight with him uh, you know we've seen it with onama we've seen it with these guys i just think emmers is going to slow the fight down and not engage a chaotic fight and use his footwork really well. And I think I like Jamal by decision here. I was, uh, I was just looking up their heights. I thought that Emmers was a lot taller for some reason. He looks, t- he looks like he's like 6'1". I think it's- he's 5'10", is what they list him at, or 5'11", right? Yeah, it might be one of those things. Um, <clears throat> I like Emmers here. I just think he's better everywhere. And I don't think that Nate necessarily has a clear grappling path. And I think, like you said, Emmers always fights his fight. He's so clean. You know, he fought a guy in Jack Jenkins who's super technical and has got great boxing and striking, and he did more than great with him. Um, I love Nate. I, I, if, if I bet on Emmers and Nate wins, like I'll be happy to lose that money. No problem. But I just, I think Emmers is better everywhere. He's so clean. So clean. Yeah. It's, it's crazy seeing him. And then that Jack Jenkins fight too. I mean, that was such a close fight. Oh, he definitely won that Yeah. Like, he, he did. I thought he did. But then, you know, you're scoring. You're the, it wasn't like the worst robbery, robbery I've ever seen, no. but I thought he won it. Um, I, I mean, right, this cool. was pretty short and simple. Yeah, Next like up, him. Chidi Njikawani, minus 142 versus Reese McGee, plus 120. Um, okay, yeah, I'll go on this one. Go. <laughs> this is just a hilarious fight, just like all together. First of all, I have a big beef with the Njikawani brothers for losing me so much money in Game Bread FC. Okay. Against the juiced up Canadian guy. Um, but I think they're going to be joining each other soon. I think they'll both be the faces of Game Bread FC moving forward. Um, I hate Chidi moving down a weight class. Oh, is this at 70? Yeah, this is at 70. Oh. And there's a few people that I, I think like, okay, moving down a weight class could help you a lot. Like Angel Pacheco, he's got a little bit of uh, little bit of fat on the tummy. Maybe moving to 35 is awesome for him. More cardio, more running. That could do it. Uh, Chidi moving down. Chidi's already shredded. He's a, I thought he was a pretty decent size 85 How would he do that? And after that last performance, he came out looking amazing. His Muay Thai is some of the most pure but clean Muay Thai in the UFC. It's unbelievable. But then he kind of just got hit and quit and <laughs> seceded to Lord Michael, right? That was a 
very telling and very interesting one. And Reese McKee is a lot of things. He's a punching bag. He's white. He's Irish. Everything that I hate in this life. But he's very tough. And he's got a great jab. And he stays very calm, very composed. And he can go forever. He really can. Um, Angelusa beat him within an inch of his life. And there he was, still standing, and put it on him late. Um, I, I had to. I, I could see that this line was going to turn. So I played Reese McKee already, I think, like plus 178, something like that, and starting to narrow a little bit. I like McKee, and I like McKee rounds two, rounds three. Ugh. I know you were going to go cheaty, and then the weight class thing. Yeah, threw the you weight, off. it really throws me off because, man, cheaty is good, and you said it, man. Reese is too white. Like, he's just so slow. It's like, uh, Irish Monsterat, you know, like who, uh, what's it, Rendon Monsterat, yeah, yeah. just so slow and clunky. He's got a nice jab. Come on. I really like his jab. Oh, come on. It'll get there. Oh, come on. He's so hittable. He's so unathletic. He's so white. Um, man, I, Chidi is so much better, but does he gas out? Like, that's the, it literally is, can he just not death gas? Uh, Man, I, I gotta, I gotta say, Cheaty still, just because I, you're hitting me with a hard one right here. Yeah, there's gonna going to be violence on this yeah. one, but um, I, for some reason, I didn't look at the weight class. I just assume, you know, I see Cheaty, and I just assumed it was 85. I think Cheaty's um, gonna beat a lot of guys in game bread for sure. Bare knuckle yeah, MMA. I, I, I don't think you're necessarily wrong. All right, I'm, I'm gonna go with Cheat. I, I gotta say, <sighs> I, I'm gonna stick with Cheaty. Like, I right. just, uh, oh gosh, um. He can do it. He can do it. You believe in him? We should have him on the show next time. All right. <laughs> I, I, I'm not even going to break it down. I'm going with Chidi. Okay. All right. Next up, Bill Algeo minus 218 versus Kyle Nelson plus 180. Uh, I'll go on this one because I didn't really go on the last one. Uh, Kyle Nelson got a gift in that last fight with a – one with a de decision. Yeah. But two with a Padilla that – when I like I think people thought – Padilla might lose this last fight based on the Nelson fight. Of course, that was baked into the yeah. price. If it didn't happen, he was minus 400. Yeah, the, two things with that is one, I think Nelson just had this. Padilla just like plods forward and is, I mean, beautiful jab, a lot of good stuff about him. But he's not a mover. He's not the guy that's like really dynamic and is all over the place. He's there to kick. And Nelson, he would just walk forward and Nelson would land those body kicks, land the low kicks. And then he landed just a really good overhand that hurt Padilla. And I think that was really the fight. I think, I don't think Padillo ever got, was ever recovered from that. And from that moment on, he just looked a step behind. And I, I think that that's the price. That's why, you know, people are, if anyone thinks that Kyle can win this and oh, what are the odds on this? The odds, Algeo minus 218, Nelson plus 180. You know, honestly, yeah, this should be Algeo minus 350. I think if that last fight didn't happen, um, Algeo is, he moves too well. He's smart. He does a lot of stuff. He does all of the right stuff. I mean, is he going to win a world title? Probably not, but he's tall and rangy and his takedown defense is good and his cardio is good. And I think that Kyle is, I think Kyle has got to go chase Algeo down where Padilla was in Kyle's face moving forward. And I think Bill is just going to pick him apart. Um, the movement, the jujitsu, the cardio, give me uh, Mr. Perfecto all day or Senor Perfecto. What is it? Senor Perfecto. Senor Perfecto all day long. I, I am in love with Algio almost yeah. as much as Talbot. He's one of my favorite fighters. I think he's just got such a great uh, archetype for modern MMA. Like take down defense. I have good jujitsu to get you off me. I'm going to volume you. I'm going to move. Like I have cardio for days. Like he is just the most gangster I, I love I love Bill Algio, and uh, like you said, I don't see it going any different here. Nelson is slow and plods forward and chases you, and Algio, that's he's the uh, he's the matador. I love it. Um, yeah, geez, uh, man, I love me some Bill Algio, and he's amazing on the mic too. And it's you know Atlantic City, so this is his card bringing the Canadian in. Um, geez, Algio, I think has got to be he's just dependable. He's like a he's like a Honda. He just can run. He's not super fast. Not going to break the mile time, you know the 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 lap record. But man, he's dependable. Can run for three hundred thousand miles. Yeah, the issue with Algio is sometimes he doesn't go for the finish, and sometimes when things are close, he's kind of there. But I don't think this. In this fight, 
that's gonna look how he did Brito, Joe yeah. Anderson Brito, and Brito yeah. is just like a mauler and does crazy stuff to everybody. Look how he did it. It was like, man, why yeah. couldn't he? The only critique was, man, why couldn't he finish him? Not like, wow, that was a close fight. Um, yeah, I love uh, I love Aljo here, and honestly, I think it's a not the worst price Submission? considering Aljo. Uh, yeah, he submits him. Come I don't on. know, but I would say it's over one and a half. So Algio over one and a half. I don't think it'll be super early because um, some Kyle's a, there. Sometimes he won't just piss He's off. He's getting submitted. Be real. You think so? Oh, 100%. All right. Bill's such a crafty black belt. He is. Um, all, all right. right next next up, up, we've got uh, a name that I can't pronounce with a name that I can't pronounce. Well, why don't you let the Hawaiian say it? Yeah, yeah, I, got you. I know. That's I why got I'm, you. I, I, I didn't say the words. I'm letting him not pronounce them. Nurselton Ruzi Boa. Minus 265 versus Cedricus Dumas, plus 215. Hey, your boy's been practicing his names before the shows. I read a comment, and I had to go back to the drawing board because I read a comment on one of the videos, and it said, man, your producer's trash. And I thought, you know what? Their producer, their video editor is phenomenal, man. <laughs> Whoever edits their videos, phenomenal, but the producer is trash. Does not to pronounce any names. I couldn't even argue with them. So I was like, you know what? I got I to gotta get better. Just in time for your resignation. That's it. That's it. So for my next three episodes, I'm not mispronouncing any of these names. None. Not a single one. Not a single one. Not a single one. He went back and watched the fights to see how Bruce Somebody Buffer said Somebody else actually posted, uh, yeah, you, yeah. go go watch Bruce Buffer do it. Um, I want you spinning Gaito. around over here. Gaito. Yeah. Gaito. Have Gaito. you told Gaito? the story on the pod? Oh, no. Yeah, that story's hilarious. Um, yeah, Roman Salazar was fighting in the UFC, and he's like, how do you pronounce your, name, your uh, nickname? Uh, he's like, Gaito. He's like, Galito? And he's like, no, Gaito, he's a Galito. He's Gaito, and he's a Galito. He's like, okay. <laughs> I don't know. How do you, how I forget how it? I forget how he announced it, but uh, funny interaction. But yeah, I want you to start. We need to film you announcing the names while you do the Kamuela 360 and and go through the <laughs> go through it all. Um, yeah, there was a comment that said uh, uh, Kamuela is butchering the names worse than Santino ever has. <laughs> I was like, my boy. <laughs> My boy. Yeah, I saw that too. That 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 hit. Yeah. That hit deep. Hit yeah. Home. So if you guys are watching this right now, please leave a derogatory comment about Kamuela, our producer. Say any mean thing you've yeah, ever wanted to in our YouTube that. comments, and he will read them. I'll read yeah. them. It'll make me better. Yeah. It'll make me better. Please do. But it'll also make you cry. It'll make him cry. <laughs> yeah, we don't gotta talk about that. Uh, all right. Um, like Dumas, I. Th him getting, I don't know, man. Like you're saying that, like it's like a French name. Like it's hilarious how you're saying that. What Dumas? Dumas? Like Dumas? Dumas? Yeah. How would you say it? Dumbass? <laughs> <laughs> that's about right. Well, you don't gotta be calling him names, man. Yeah, I mean, like <laughs> that's, that's about the right. Alternative is like it's Cedriques Dumas or Cedriques Dumas. Cedric Dumbass. <laughs> All right, Cedric Dumbass is two and one in the UFC. <laughs> say it like, like, wait, say it how JSP would say it. <laughs> I think I just did. <laughs> Cedricus Damas. Um, he's got a win over Josh Fremd. And then uh, the flank right shit was the funniest shit in the world. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to see him backstage I'm, I'm gonna one day. I'm going to get yelled at for that. He's going to be like, what? Uh, I'm going to get like, <laughs> uh, we're fighting now. Um, man, uh, I want to like Cedric here. Um, his, his dumbass or his dumbass fight with Josh Fremd. Uh, just got, getting taken down, lying on his back, coming up, getting guillotined. And then, and even you know, Brundage, you just don't death gas, and he turned. But it, his fight with Abu Azatar, who's death gassed in 38 seconds. I, like, I, I was trying to find a way for him to win because I remember last time we were like, is Nur Sultan a fraud or not? You know, we're kind of like, ah, he's fighting um, – Bruno Ferreira, who is knocking people out, and all right, Ferreira's going to do it. And then, of course, he just like 30 seconds in, pop, pop, death gap, you know, death sim. Uh, the funny thing about that, though, is I, I, I think we said that before, is I don't think it was a punch that knocked him out. I think he timed a punch as Ferreira was kicking, and that just dropped him. I think he just caught him slipping. But then on the ground, it was the ground and pound pop, afterwards, pop. the follow up that really did the work. Um, and then he was done, Dada. You know, but. Nur Sultan is he moves well and he's actually like loose on the feet and I, I wanted to find a way that he loses this that so we could say all right he is a fake he is a fraud and you know dumbass has got some wins on it and is gonna do it I, I think Nur Sultan gets it done here I think I, I just don't think Dumas has enough 
wrestling to really take control. And we haven't seen, I haven't seen enough from him that leads me to believe that he's going to win this fight. And any thoughts on the allegations? What allegations? What are we doing? Oh, I don't know. He's any. beating up his girl. What you oh, mean? no way. See, I'm so oblivious to all this stuff. Um, He's Nurselton. A, he's oh Nurselton. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, I was like, <laughs> I'm just well, throwing you for loose here. Yeah, no, I, it's I just funny. I just said he's beating his girl, and you didn't even question who I was talking about. You're like, oh yeah. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> so I, I mean, Nurselton's stand up is good. He has not fought a lot of great people. He loses to most of the fight to the higher level comp guys, but he's losing decisions for the most part. And I think he, you know, I think dumbass is fine, but I just don't think that he went. I don't think he has a way to win. Like, I don't know. What do you got here? Um, I'm about to go on another show after this, I guess. What show is it? Uh, Clint. Dyer, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, who also lives in Phoenix. I can give out his address on the pod if. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Um, you know, it's fun. Okay. I'll just tell this quick story. So one time, you know, you, you can look up where people live. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I looked up where he lived and I sent him a bottle of, uh, alcohol, some fireball. Cause that's like his thing is he like loves fireball. Right. So I sent him a bottle of uh, fireball to his house anonymously, like door dashed, sent it to his house. And he was like, he, he like messaged me right away. He's like, was this you? Like he kind of was freaking out. And, uh, he's like, Hey, just like, please don't do that again. Like, I don't like my address out there. It was creepy in hindsight. Like I knew, but I thought it would be funny enough to outweigh the creepy. And then, uh, I had just moved in. So I bought my house a year ago. And I'm like doing something. There was like somebody at my house for something, like whatever. I was busy. And then I just get a knock on the door randomly. And it's him holding a like a 36 pack of white claws and uh and some rum. I don't know. Rum. He's just like, hey. And I just was like, I was like very now I get it. No, I was so inconvenienced because I was like, hey man. So <laughs> this this was me. Thanks so much. See you later. <laughs> Shut the door. <laughs> I felt so bad. Well, the dude showed up. I don't know. That's a little weird. His uh, family in the car yeah. and everything. It was weird. Anyways, uh, I'm going on his show afterwards. And the reason that I bring him up, uh, one, he's just a cisgender white male. And that's it. That's all. I, no, all I'm right. just kidding. He has five units on, uh, on dumbass. Really? Yeah. Do you like that or not? Well, well, hold on. Even before you answer, to me... This is almost a coin flip where I just, neither of these guys are amazing. I just think Nars, no, she's a kid, I mean, Sultan is there to actually win, whereas Damas is kind of like. He needs some weed money. Yeah. Well, he, well, no, he almost reminds me of a Jamie Pickett where he's kind of there and he'll do some stuff, but he's not really there to win and he'll defend some stuff well enough. And then you're tired and then he somehow kind of wins. Well, honestly, um, it makes me sad because I look at him and how he moves. I think he could be so right? good. So good. He hits really hard and he is so athletic, like crazy athletic. The problem that I have is he's almost got the, the Kevin Holland effect to me where it's like, what is his game plan going to be? Because he will just go out and just do whatever. He's just sparring out there. Yeah. He, he uh, got... Azitar down round one and looked great, was dominating, and then said, you know what, for the next 10 minutes, I'm just going to strike at range with him. Like, oh, I'm good with that. And I'm like, man, you have such a big advantage in the grappling, and you're very athletic, you could do it, but no, I'm just going to strike at range with him. Here, here's my problem. And the reason I've done so much better this year is because instead of like insisting on fading these guys who looked horrible on tape before the UFC, like, nah, these guys suck. There's some kind of switch that happens where they get with a real camp, they get with a good doctor, and then all of a sudden they look amazing, right? And Nurselton, he's at with the Philly boys now. Yep. And the big knock on him, I mean, you can just see it on tape. I, I rewatched a lot of his tape, and a lot of it's pretty short. But he goes, gets taken down easily, goes for the arm bar, and his legs sit straight up in the air, like Vanessa Demopoulos style until we told her to curl her legs. But he's just like this. Somebody clipped this, by the way. But he's just like legs up in the air like this. And that's not how you finish an arm bar because people stack They're not going to have audio with that clip. They're just going to show you with your ass in the air. I'm good with that. <laughs> I've shown my ass on the podcast before. This is like nothing. But uh, yeah. Can somebody meme that? People cut clips up every week and it's the funniest thing to me in the world. Um, but yeah, that's just improper technique. And then he ended up going belly down, which was fine. And it was good. And he finished that fight. But the problem is, is like, is he going to do that at the UFC level? And we, we don't know a Again, lot about him. he's with the Philly boys, man. Those guys, 
just by not wanting to get punched in the face every day, you're going to learn to get back up. I, I, to- I agree with you. That's what I'm saying is I think yeah. the, the reason I've done better is not like, like old me would have been like, no, Dumas is going to dog him out. He's going to take him down and, and, and destroy him. For me now, this is a complete pass because I don't have enough new information about Nurselton. Yeah. Do you have something to say? You're getting real close to that yeah. mic. Yeah, like he was creeping up to do something. You saw that too. Mm-hmm. Okay. The other thing, so it's funny. You, I was actually looking at Dumas to see like where he's training these days. And then it looks like it's in somebody's garage. And yeah. Like, and so I was like, man, if he's at like 18, if he was with the camp, just getting like, just grinding it out with big people, his size, like give me a reason to pick you. I, I wanted the reason to pick him. I, I don't hate the underdog shot yeah. on him. But I, I'm like, man, we don't have enough yeah. new information on Nurselton to pick either side. Like, I wouldn't feel comfortable picking Nurselton, and I'm not yep. dying on my shield. Like, no, this is the guy. Yeah. But to go five units on, uh, oh, geez, and w- what are the odds on Dumas? Like uh, it's again, like plus two twenty, plus yeah, two twenty, two fifty. That's not a bad underdog play. Like, don't get me wrong at all. Small, but, but the confidence on it is just not there. And, and if he was with a camp, knowing that he's grinding it out with a Joe Pfeiffer or something like that, like yeah. with the Philly guys with Sean Brady and them, like, again, give me a reason to, to pick you. His striking is clean and it's sharp and it's very long. So if he can get that grappling anywhere semblance near, yep. but honestly, even if Dumas takes him down in round one, what if we see the same repeat? He's yeah. like, oh, I'm going to get tired if I do that again. So now I'm going to strike with you for 10 and, minutes. And uh, Nur is a decent striker, a good, clean striker with good power good. down. You know, I don't know that he's going to fade out like Abu did. So, All right. All right, next up, Chris Weidman, plus 230 versus Bruno Silva, minus 290. I think I'm taking Weidman on one last run. It's weird for me to say that because I'm the biggest Bruno Silva fan in the world. I love Brazilians, like, more than anything. And, uh, like, I would die for Brazilians. Wish I was one. She's not listening, <laughs> but, um, she's like, I'm checked out. Yeah. She's, she's gone, but I, I love Bruno Silva. I love his game. We've talked about it for a long time. His jiu-jitsu is good. His, his uh, counter wrestling is awesome. He's got great power, good volume. I like a lot of stuff about him and a lot of people are going to make parallels. This is the most MMA math thing in the world you can do, right? Well, Tavares beat Weidman, but Bruno Silva knocked out Tavares. So thus, uh, Bruno is going to kill Weidman. And I'm like, man, Weidman got killed in that fight by leg kicks, right? And that's something like involuntary. It's not like his chin win or anything. He got leg kicked like crazy. And then he went against the guy that's got the best takedown defense in the history of the UFC. And he still didn't fuck off. Like he was still in his face. You're like, you know, I had a huge bet on um, Tavares in that fight. And I'm sitting on the edge of my seat round three, like, oh shit, oh shit. Here we go. Here we go. Right. Cause Weidman didn't stop coming. And, um, I mean, you see Andrew Sanchez putting Bruno up on, on the fence for three rounds until he just death gassed and got uh, got hit. I actually like Weidman's jiu-jitsu. I think he's got really, really solid grappling, really good jiu-jitsu. And he runs a lot of good uh, single legs to the outside, a lot of um, tricky wrestling, I would say. I honestly can see a world where Weidman gets on top and beats him up, dominates him, and submits him. I'm going Chris Weidman on this one. I can't get behind you on it. I know where you're going. I get that. It makes sense because the grappling. He won't die. He does have a really good upside with the grappling and with the single leg. You're absolutely right. My issue with Weidman these days, he's so slow. He just got so much slower. And Bruno, for all of his faults, he's still spry. Like He's good. He you really see him is. with that. Even in the Shara fight, like just his movement, his speed, he is good. And he's not the best. Like we've seen him get taken down and submitted by Allen. We've seen even the Shara fight, like where he just wasn't making the reads right and got hit and should have wrestled more earlier and all of that stuff. But he's generally like, you kind of know what you're getting with Bruno Silva for the most part. He is good, but he's just fast. He's still fast. He still moves well. And I just think that Weidman's going to have a really hard time just grabbing him, just getting a hold of him. And I think if Bruno can just move, and I don't even mean like crazy lateral, like footwork movement. I mean, just throw and get back in a stance and just get out of the way. I just, Weidman is so slow to me right now that I can't get behind it. I, I just can't with, with how slow he, he looked in that last fight, how many leg kicks he took and just, I mean, he's as tough as they come, but I just, 
can't. You don't think he uh, gets one last one in, in Atlantic City? He's got to be the A side, right? He, I don't know if he's the A side. I think I'm joking. Okay, parody. Yeah, but he is from that region. He is no, he is the A side. I think they're going. Hey, we're going to give you your last fight near your hometown. Um, we'll give you the one. Um, I just can't. He's lost like seven out of his last eight or nine, and he's just getting he's older getting and older up. and older. Um, generally, when people retire and then they come back, they don't go on some streak. And I, I just. I don't know. I don't see it. I, uh, who was saying that they've never been to a UFC event? Oh, maybe I was listening to the Peyton Talbot interview and he said he'd never been to a UFC fight before. Um, the, the two coolest moments that I had ever seen in person live, not coolest moments, like most like grand moments, I guess. Uh, same card. It was Weidman breaking his leg on Uriah Hall. And then in the main event was Rose head kicking Wei Lee. Mm. amazing same night and the energy was like crazy that was so such a crazy event amazing but anyways okay well there you have it folks all right and the co-main vicente luque minus 120 versus joaquin buckley at plus 100 watching tape on this i was i rewatched the in my head i was like man buckley might beat up uh vicente standing and then but Vincente is going to wrestle him. So does he wrestle him and out wrestle him? We saw how he out wrestled RDA the last fight. So we went back and watched that fight for this, the RDA Vincente Luque fight. How many times do you think Vincente shot or initiated the grappling in that fight? Probably one or two and then turned RDA off the cage when he shot and then took him down. Zero. The closest thing that I could come to Vincente initiating was at one point, Vincente was throwing, RDA kind of threw, and they both kind of like clashed together. RDA grabbed him, and Vincente was like, okay. Like, that was the closest thing that I got to Vincente actually initiating. Everything else was RDA doing it? Was RDA. And what's funny is that I thought RDA was having better success standing with that overhand, I I mean, I guess you'd call it a right hook, but the RDA thrown was kind of overhand. And not to say that he was like murdering him, but I, I think that, after four rounds of not getting the takedown and then getting reversed, <laughs> then maybe in the fifth round, RDA was like, hey, I've landed some shots. Maybe I should try to just strike this yeah, let's last round. Yeah, and no. Um, Vincente is good all around. We know that. We saw the RDA fight. We know how much he can wrestle. After that fight, RDA dropped back down 155 because he was like, no, thank you, sir. Uh, Vincente, the thing that for as technical as the striking is – I think it actually hurts him here with this Buckley fight. He's the typical kill cliff Dutch style kickboxer. Walk forward, slow. Yep. Walk forward, hands up. And he's not even wide with his hands. He's actually really tight. Like his hands are almost on his face all the time. And generally that's good. You guys don't get me wrong. But uh, Buckley throws a lot of hooks and a lot of stuff kind of toward the back of the head. And you don't have a frame. It's not really good or bad. It's just different. It's just a stylistic thing. You yes. like to flare your hands because you like yes. you can see everything coming up the center, but you like to protect yourself from the hooks. Yep. And then you can parry in the middle. Whereas here, you can get stuff wrapped around your head really easily. It's even why boxers, like they're really bladed yes. a lot of times and they'll keep hands down because they're not so worried about, but, but if you're here, this is how I was taught to box when I first stepped into a gym. Yep. I think that's how everyone's taught. And then you change you branch off style, but that seems yeah. like the worst thing because i can't really parry and i can't like def- i can't defend much this is like yeah. just i'm covering and i'll wait till you're done yeah w- with luke again he's he's not overly old i think he's 32 but he's been chinned a lot he's had some mileage um he, he does so much stuff well but you watch him try to track people and he definitely is better going forward that said if you watch a lot of the people that he's fighting that he's doing well it's it's when they move left and right, that messes him up, especially with how tight he is. And Buckley is constantly like moving and lunging left and right and kind of angling really awkward off rhythm pattern. And then he explodes in and he's not bad anywhere. It's not like he's like, just, he's not like uh, Abdul Razak Al Hassan that we kind of, Oh, he needs that big overhand or the big swinging punches. He's rounded so, out his game. Come on. Who have no, he has, but, he like, better. but back in the day when we first saw him come in, where he's just like, uh, you know, uh, a Ehor Pretoria just swinging and going, or you know, or round one, three minutes in, whatever. Buckley's legitimately really good, and then 
the defensive wrestling, I, I actually, RDA sh- would shoot and push him to the cage. And there's so many people that are so good at defending cage stuff these days. Um, and then, but Buckley blast doubles you and takes you off your feet. So I think if Buckley even does wrestle, I mean, we saw it with the Morono fight. I mean, dude, Morono is in the air pulling guard five feet up because he knows he's just, and Vincente, I think is an infinitely better wrestler than Morono. So don't, don't get me wrong, but just there. Uh, we saw our guy Ray Waters just fought this week uh, against one of the Cooper boys, shoot in, clinch, and man, he was defending everything on the cage. And then we told him, hey, you've got to wrestle legs out in the open. And it was that was a, a great story. adjustment. My girlfriend and I were actually watching that fight, and uh, her comment was like, "Man, Ray's having a really tough time taking anybody. He, like his cage wrestling is not perfect." But then we were watching Ray, and he would have those exchanges where you go, "That fucking guy can wrestle," and it was all open mat, like you said. And that actually is a great comparison to Buckley because he's blast doubles, mm-hmm. sweeps people off. God damn, Ray can fucking wrestle. That was amazing. It was funny, yeah. After Eddie and I are in the corner round one, kind of a minute left or whatever, and we're like, hey, he's got to go to the legs. The upper body stuff's not working. And then actually Cooper reversed him at the end off that yeah, throw. Yeah, he tried to hit a, hit a little like um, – how do you call that? Because he, he clamped the arm and then tried to take him over and ended up on bottom. Well, yeah, he tried to just hit, hit a, a body lock throw. Yeah. And then Cooper just floated his hips and came up on top. And uh, in between the round one and two, I said, hey, stop wrestling upper body, attack the legs. Uh, you know, and he did, he actually goes, I said, Hey, you probably lost round one. Like not probably he did. Yeah. All it, three judges did. It was a close round. And, and honestly, this just, just for just MMA in general, um, Ray is an incredible wrestler and an amazing fighter and lost the first round to McCole Cooper. Who's not bad at all, but, Ray came out and threw a head kick and then ended up on his back and like lost like half that round. He spent the rest of the round trying to make it up and then made one mistake with 10 seconds in a round that could have gone either way. I think it was trending back toward Ray. Yep. And then that ending up on the bottom sealed it for McCullough. And even though Ray is better in every single category everywhere, easily he could have lost that fight. Just one little detail, yeah. one little thing. Uh, so you just got to fight smart. But it's funny, you know, he made the adjustments and did well. And it's funny because at no point did McCoa really mount any offense. That's true. It was just even defensively, though, he jumped on top and then floated yeah. his hips, came out. And, Being opportunistic. Yeah, and you it's don't, just weird. Sometimes that's what I admire about Christian's game, C-Rod, because C-Rod is like, it's not like he's putting... 10 piece combos on guys. He's kind of like being enough to like make them swing and then they mess up or they panic. And then he's just got heavy enough hips to counter and, and do that kind of stuff. So anyways, we're getting off, but we are, but yeah, that, it, it's a good comparison because Buckley takes people off and Buckley's cardio is good. His defensive wrestling is good. His power is good. I like Buckley here. I like Buckley as a Southpaw going a Southpaw who moves and is really explosive against a guy who stands there. And I, I can get hit. If I lose more money on or against Vicente Luque, I will lose my mind. I, I remember being in Costa Rica and I, I had uh, him big against Bilal. And Bilal just put on a masterclass, dominated him, was never even close. And then I was like, all right, well, Vicente is going to end up on his back. RDA, he's a good grappler. He's going to take him down and kill him. And I just kept missing the market. And I, I didn't see things for how they are. I saw things for how I wanted them to be. Well, before you even go, that's actually interesting because RDA was trying to take him down on the cage yeah. and Bilal was actually circling the cage, moving laterally, and then taking him down out toward the open. Toward the open, yeah. I think I like Joaquin here. I like his in-tight boxing. He's one of the few guys that's willing to be three inches from your face and throw a five-piece combination. Um, and he's powerful. I, I think he's got a, a full, complete game. I like his kicks on the outside. I like his movement. He does a lot of stuff well, and he's super game to fight. Um yeah, I mean, if he even goes to the grappling and ends up on top, I like him there too. I think, uh, man, it's hard. People people are in love with Vicente Luque. They do. And I think it's, he's been around forever. He does Spanish commentary. Uh, he, he's one of those guys. He's handsome just, as hell. You saw him the other day? Yeah. He looked gorgeous. How do, you, how, do you, how do you choose against that? I got jungle fever, baby. Let's go, Joaquin. Done. Uh, we got a main event. Is this already the main? Main. That's the co-main? That's co. Nice. We got a main event, two women fights in a row, headlining cards. And I actually did tape on both of them last week and this week. But let's go to last week's main event really quickly because we said, yeah, Rose wins, yada, yada, yada. Um, But the one thing that I was worried about was just does she lose focus and this and that. And she kind of – she 
she's so good and then she just doesn't like go out there to kill all the time and and he bus did well and you know but i thought it was a closer fight than the scorecards yeah, indicated so i um then the, the whole conversation first of all mma judging is i hate it these days because because four minutes of control and then one punch and now you just won the whole round even if you put together a beautiful four minutes 35 seconds whatever you get hit one time all of a sudden you lose the round and i think that's such an overreaction to how it used to be where oh i get one takedown i i won the round even if they get up and it's a little bit frustrating and watching rose right rose was the last piece for me to close out everything right so obviously i'm i'm rooting for rose um there was one round where she was kind of getting tagged on the feet a little bit, like kind of getting volumed on the feet. And then she shot in a takedown and ended up on top, but didn't throw anything. And, you know, Amanda's on the bottom. Just, on the bottom, rabbit punching and going, yes. And I'm almost like, all right, guys, if we're trying to be consistent here, Amanda's the only one doing anything. Whether it's top, whether it's bottom, she's the only one really doing anything. And so, you know, watching that live, I was like, man, I think I need to put more money on Amanda because it was, you know, to hedge out. I'm like, I kind of think she's winning these rounds. And so my personal scorecard, I had Rose three to two, but it was close. And there was rounds that could have gone either way, I think. Yeah, I thought it was three to two as well. I was actually texting with Tracy, who was there watching it. And we were texting in the fifth round. And she was like, yeah, I think that, or maybe it was in the fourth round. She's like, I think it's close. She's like, I think uh, Amanda is probably barely winning. She's like, but it's really close. And, you know, we were going back and forth because it was like, and I, just because it was so close, it wasn't cut. Like, I think I could be sitting next to five different people and everyone would have a different opi opinion. Oh, it's three to one, you know, Rose. It's two to two, you know, going into it. It's, you know, three to one, Amanda or whatever. I mean, I, it just, it was a really close fight. And it really comes down to what those judges were looking at right then and there for that fight. It's, like you said, it's really hard to gauge stuff these days. I, I didn't even think Rose was having a lot of success on the feet. No, yeah, I... I think she was, but not what we expected her. Like, Amanda does so much stuff. She's just, like, you're like, what the fuck are you doing? Where are you? Like, but what that's are you the doing? thing is Rose was trying yeah. to be so clean. And when she would pop her, she would she would get her good. But then it was like, all right, Amanda's filled the space with six different punches by the time you landed one good one. And so now what do you score? The volume and the girl who's walking her down versus the one who's counter punching and landing, you know, one clean shot. Very close fight. And uh, the scoring is just like... I don't know. The scoring yeah. is interesting. Um, okay. Going into this week's main event, we have Aaron Blanchfield and Manon Furio. Okay. Furo, but Furo. Furo? Is it Furo? Furo. Furo. Are you being Furo? Are you being? I'm Furo. <laughs> uh, Blanchfield is minus 205. Furo is plus 170. Uh, man, first of all, do you, I mean, Watch yes, it. she's lesbian. Okay, let's get it they out of there. Are. Yeah, they all are. Uh, Aaron, do you th did you think that she beat Talia Santos? Yeah. Okay, because a lot of people. I, I remember I I didn't watch it live, but a lot of people I remember say were saying, "Oh, Talia won. Um, she got robbed." Yada yada. And I watched it back for this, and I thought that Blanchfield won. She um, it was again close and not a lot happened, close, but, but she, I thought she won. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. So anyway, Furo. Her movement is great. We've seen like, I mean, her, her lateral movement is great. The, what actually most impresses me is I was trying to find like, and actually you guys, if you go to UFC stats, I was trying to find out like who has taken Furo down and then like the grappling. Cause I didn't want to go through every single fight to look at everything. And then I saw all of her takedowns. The only person to take her down was Maya. I don't even know if I would credit that as a takedown. Cause it was real fast. Like it like, so not only did, so Maya did get her down a knee hit, but what I loved about that was Faro wasn't. You see people getting taken down for better or worse. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but you see people getting taken down, and even as they build, they're like, "Okay, I'm moving. I'm here. I'm calm. There's risk control. Whether they do the right stuff or whether they have the sense of urgency or whatever. That's the general thing about it." Faro got taken down, and she flailed like she was about to be murdered dead, dead, if she didn't get up right then and there. The sense of urgency and going just insane, and you just see her kicking and flailing and going. And every time that Maya got a hold of her, I mean, she's like electricity shooting through her, spazzing and going, and all really good stuff, but the sense of urgency was amazing that I loved. And I was really 
impressed with that. My issue with Faro as a whole is that she doesn't finish. And then if you give Blanchfield that much time, 25 minutes, she is going to elbow you. She is going to, I actually, what I, Blanchfield is a very similar situation to Brian Ortega where she does some stuff wrong doesn't do everything well. She freaking finds a way to win the, um, who was the fight? She fought Ariane Lipsky. Um, we all thought she was going to win from Colorado. Um, JJ Aldrich, when she oh, fought yeah. Aldrich, she couldn't get her down and she was getting beat up on the feet and shot, grabbed a guillotine, submitted her standing with that. You're like, damn, like that was, that was freaking impressive. Um, she has a hard time matching people on the feet. I, I think Talia Santos was, man, Talia is a, a much better striker than Blanchfield is, but Talia is, is right there. And so when Talia would throw, Blanchfield would just grab and crash and push. And she's game. She's like, all right, cool. Throw at me. I'm going to yep, use that. Yep, she's going to do it. Um, and she's getting hit and tagged on her way in. She's bleeding from the second the first bell went. You know I mean? It, she doesn't care. She's just a dog. The issue, though, is that she doesn't track lateral movement that well. And so what I wonder is, like, yeah, she's going to get touched standing by Furo. Faro doesn't have the power, so she's going to rush in probably even more, which is fine. But will she be able to pin her to the cage the same way that she was with Talia? Um, man, Blanchfield's cage wrestling was great. She did all the right stuff. She just happened to be fighting a tall, massive, athletic Talia Santos who just wouldn't Who looks like over. the strongest woman in the division. Oh, my gosh. It was insane. She's probably stronger than half the PFL roster now. My favorite thing about Talia Santos – or I'm sorry, about Aaron Blanchfield was they separated, so they're, they're clinched. They're fighting. They separate. Talia starts fixing her top, and Blanchfield just shoots <laughs> without even caring. Didn't even acknowledge like the womanly notion of like, yes, I'll let you fix your stuff. We just shot and just kept crashing right. Honestly, I like that. I know. I love it. Um, there, there was a. I was watching a fight. Maybe this this morning. Someone called their own eye poke. Maybe it was Petrosky. Called his own eye poke and was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And the ref like didn't step in, and I was like. I wish that other dude would have stepped in and swinging. cleaned his clock because you don't just get to like, you know, it sportsmanship is before and after the fight during. Yes. If it's the all ref's game. not telling yep. me and they can tell you once, you know, people like the bite, anything you need to do. The Floyd Mayweather thing with, uh, whoever, uh, who was it that went Victor up? Ortiz, Victor Ortiz tried to like hug him, just got hit and knocked ba out. It's like, Protect yourself at all times. That's the game. And, you know, even in that fight, they said that Floyd was elbowing him and head Bernard Hopkins, they used to say, would elbow everybody. Um, sorry, headbutt everybody. Yeah. And you look at Floyd and he's 50 and 0. Man, you got to grind it out. Yeah. But uh, I, strangely enough, I, man, on a three round fight, I actually really like uh, Furo here to get it done. On a five round fight, I wonder. I have not seen anything that makes me believe that Furo will tire. It's just giving Aaron Blanchfield more minutes on the clock to try to do damage. Um, I, I, I feel like I'm going to say Furo wins this and I don't, I, I'm not even confident and comfortable with that because I believe Blanchfield is just a dog and will just find a way to do stuff. But Furo's fast. She's athletic. She moves really well. We haven't seen her gas out. She has all the fight IQ stuff, everything. The Blanchfield just has more ways to win and, yeah, I I've, I think I view this a lot differently. I've been the biggest Blanchfield uh, supporter all the way up. I bet her on every fight. I love Blanchfield. I just love how gangster she is. Yeah. She's just like, I don't care. Like, she's the kind of Les that'll spit on the ground and rub it in the dirt. Like, that kind of lesbian. Awesome. Love her. She's game, gangster, ready to fight. But her style, the, the, the issue that I have with most MMA fighters, um, like we talk about a lot, there's not really a setup. It's like, I'm here to fight. You swing at me, I'm going to swing at you, and that's it. It's not like, all right, let's put this out for later. Okay, I'm going to see this. Now this is coming. Um, and she just follows people. She doesn't cut the cage off. She just follows people. And she's fine. She's going to stand here and be tough, but she just follows. And as long as Firo has the, uh, the cardio, the fitness, I, I don't see this one being particularly close. And you're saying, okay, when a three-round fight, I favor Firo, and then a five-round fight, Blanchfield, no, no, I didn't say that. I said it just, I think it more definitely time. swings. Yeah, you just give her but, more time but think to, about this. to finish. You have the first three rounds and you're unsuccessful wrestling. 
typically, like you said in the RDA Vicente Luque fight, typically you go, okay, well, that's not working. I'm going to have to find another method. And I think that's what's going to happen is I think Firo is so tall, athletic, strong, moves well, uh, and the cage defense is, is great that I don't think that Blanchfield's going to have much success wrestling. And I think at a certain point, she's going to go, I'm going to have to figure this out a different way because I can't get takedowns and I can't catch her on the feet. Then what? See, I think she is going to have some success with the takedowns. She got her hands locked under Talia. Uh, so she's Santos. She's yeah. Talia Santos's but a couple times and was lifting and doing all the right stuff. Just Santos is just a machine right there. Um, I think she will get her down a couple of times. And I think that her ground and pound and top control is really good. It is good. I maybe I've overrated her wrestling, like her not being able to get down a few of those girls was something to me. It was interesting. I think if Fatima Klein was fighting, I'm picking Fatima, but because it's Aaron Blanchfield and Firo, I I like Firo here. Okay. Uh, we're out. The number is by the way, getting way wider on Firo. Oh, really? Did we get the odds producer game? Yeah, I think Furo is plus 170. That's a little crazy, yeah? Yeah, plus 160. Actually, wait, let me, let me check. Uh, I, I don't really care if this is in Blanchfield's backyard. Like, Yeah, Furo is uh, plus 164, Blanchfield minus 198. Interesting. Yeah. I think, um, like, like I said, the thing that this is going to be determined on whether Blanchfield can get her to the cage and get a body lock and get one or two takedowns. Um, I, I think if you see that early in round one, if she can get that, then okay, that's that's a winnable fight for Blanchfield. And then other than that, I, I think she's going to have a hard time tracking Furo. I do too. Get lit up like a Christmas tree. All right, guys, that's the show. Um, sign up for the Patreon Discord and receive zero features. Nope. Um, Actually, yeah, just pay us and we won't do anything and you'll get no bets. That's it. Junkyard That's it. is closed. I'm Junkyard's closed. closed. Brandon's out. May 18th, I'm retiring from gambling, and that's it. The money has been made. Too bad. So sad. All right. Take care, guys. Thanks.